Thanks again for joining me here at butnowministry.org and today we're going to discuss what our job is, where we fit in, what we're doing about evangelism, edification, expansion, and evaluation. Um, the four E's we're going to go through today. If you have not heard of the four E's, evangelism, edification, expansion, and evaluation. Number one, evangelism. 1 Timothy 2.4 Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Getting soul saved. Of the four E's, this is always the first issue. This is always what you deal with first. You gotta make sure they're saved. I'm thankful to the Lord for giving me a clear understanding of Paul's my gospel. Romans chapter 2 verse 16 in the King James Bible. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Paul is the only one in the Bible that calls it his gospel because his gospel is different than anyone else's in the whole Bible. Okay, By understanding the simplicity of it. That's right, the simplicity. When people tell you that the gospel is not simple, they are enemies of the gospel, okay? Because the gospel is simple. 2 Corinthians 1.12 For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world, and more abundantly to you, Ward. Now notice, it's not with fleshly wisdom. Most often, and when you are discussing the gospel of the grace of God to those who you believe are unsaved, or better yet, to those religious leaders, maybe your past leader of your so-called church, they are going to tell you, just like John MacArthur says in the New King James Version translation, whatever you want to call it, he says, salvation is not simple. Okay? Let me say that again. John MacArthur, as well as my old pastor at Harvest Translation Chapel, says the gospel is not simple. That's your first clue that that person that you're talking to is not saved. Okay? Because the gospel, according to God's words, is simple. All right? Unless, 2 Corinthians 11:3, but I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Okay? These false teachers, these people that claim that they know God because they made Jesus the Lord of their life, or they know God because they accepted Jesus in their heart, or they know God because they pray the sinner's prayer, these are unsaved religious leaders because those three things I just mentioned are not in any they're not in a Bible, and better yet, they're not in any translation. Okay, Making Jesus the Lord of your life, and accepting Jesus in your heart, and praying the sinner's prayer, none of that is Bible. So none of that is going to save your soul. Okay, They beguile you through the simplicity that is in Christ with fleshly wisdom. They are not sincere. It is not, their sincerity is not godly. Okay? And the simplicity, by understanding the simplicity of the death, burial, and resurrection, because that is the gospel that saves us today. It's not Acts chapter 2.38, repenting and being baptized, or confessing with your mouth, Okay, it's 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Paul declares, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, 
if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Not according to your denomination, not according to your non-denomination, not according to your religious pastor who doesn't even know how to be saved, not according to your religious pastor who doesn't even use a Bible. Okay? That would be most at that would be all of Harvest. That would be all your Lutherans. That would be all your Methodists. That would be all your Baptists. That would be your Muslims, your Jehovah Witnesses, your Mormons, your Hindus. I mean, we can go on and on with all the people that don't have a Bible. Okay? Your Roman Catholics. I think, I think you get the point. Okay? It's the death and burial and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and you need to believe that by faith to be saved. Okay? Since I understand that and I hope that you who is listening understands, it's much easier now to preach and teach the gospel because you understand it with clarity. Okay? Every opportunity that we get as ambassadors, as members of the body of Christ, we are to preach and teach the gospel, the grace of God. That is our job, right? What is the will of God today? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Okay. When you are steeped in Pauline doctrine, You'll listen for clues when talking to people about any type of religious background, and then you'll know how to approach them. Most denominations trust in water baptism plus what Jesus did to be saved, or confessing with the mouth plus what Jesus did to be saved. And I've said this in past messages, if you think Jesus did his part, and now you must do you, your part to get saved or stay saved, Write down what your part is, and at the top of the page write, why I'm going to hell. Because if you think you have a part in the finished work of the risen Savior, then that's why you're going to hell. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Thou, if, if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay? Or think they have to be a church member. Again, that is Israel's doctrine, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Paul is clearly writing to Israel. And what does Israel's program always have to do, to do with? It always has to do with keeping the commandments, selling all your possessions, so they can inherit the kingdom, ultimately so they can get through the tribulation to inherit the kingdom and finally get saved, okay? Because they're not saved. Israel has to do a bunch of things before they get saved, okay? So, or they think they have to be a church member, right? They either have to confess with their mouth or they have to pray the sinner's prayer or they have to ask Jesus to be the Lord of their life. Or they have to accept him in their heart. Why would Jesus want to go into your evil, wicked heart? Jeremiah 17 tells us that. Genesis chapter 5 tells us that. Makes no sense. Or they think they're a church member destined to do good works for the church, right? You ever wonder that? You get saved, right? And now you're serving at your so-called church in the children's ministry, and that's what God would have for you, your whole Christian life. That's it. Serving in the children's ministry, telling people, telling children that the animals got on Noah's Ark two by two, which is a lie. Or telling children in your children's ministry that angels have wings and they're female, which is another lie. But this is the curriculum they give you as you're teaching never dying souls to go to hell ultimately is what you're doing in these so-called ministries for Christ 
Okay, these are false ministries, people. These are false teachers. These are people who do not use a Bible. These are people who do not believe their Bible. These are people who take any verse out of context. These are people who put you under Israel's laws and promises and take away your liberty. I was on, this, on the road the other day and this person in front of me had a bumper sticker that said, we will always fight for liberty. That's no different than the Christian walk. That's no different when you're in these denomination, non-denominational places that put you under the law and not grace. It's always a fight for the liberty that Christ has given us as members of the church, the body of Christ. So Romans 1, 6, for I am not, I'm sorry, volunteering as an usher, the children's ministry, the small group leader, the choir, etc. Most never preach the gospel themselves. I served in the children's ministry for I don't know how many years at Harvest. Not once on the curriculum was there any type of teaching or preaching that we are to make sure that anyone's saved. That is not part of the agenda, not part of the curriculum. And I ask you to question that yourself if you're still going to one of those places. They don't know what the gospel is to make sure that people are saved. And ultimately, if most pastors knew what that gospel was, they would be making sure that when they marry a man and a woman, they're equally yoked based on their understanding of the gospel, the grace of God. But what's happening today is you have pastors who are probably, I want to say they're unsaved, and they're mar marrying and yoking together unsaved people or one saved and not saved, they don't even know. Pastors need to be standing up for marriage and they need to be standing up and making sure that people are equally yoked when they get married. That would dissolve all this homosexual marriage and everything else that's going on today. Why didn't you marry somebody? They're not equally yoked. Let's see what the courts say about that one. Most never preach the gospel themselves, and if they are saved, if they are saved and involved with the church. And it's true, because you're just following an agenda. And so much for our job. Our number one job is evangelism. Okay? As part of the four E's. Evangelism, edification, expansion, and evaluation. When I was at church, I never heard anyone tell me the gospel. Why? Because they're ashamed. Romans 1.16 For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. They're ashamed, they're blinded, and or they're not saved. If they're not saved, they're blinded. And who are they blinded by? 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, In whom the God of this world, lowercase g, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Sharing, preaching with them simple truths is a great ice breaker. Okay, you don't want to share. The only time the word share is mentioned in the Bible is when it's attached to a plow. Okay, you don't share nothing. You preach and you teach. Okay, that's another way, that's another simple little clue when a person claims to be a Christian, that's a little clue to tell you if he understands his Bible or not. How many times does he use the word share rather than preach and teach? Okay, a big one is preaching and teaching how Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are all Old Testament books. And that's a great one to talk to your people that you know that go to these different denominations, non-denominational places. That's what I told um, one of my friends the other day who left Harvest also, not for the same reason. I left Harvest because they're not, they don't have a Bible and they're not teaching any doctrine at all. 
They're mixing everything up in their Bible like a spir spiritual blender. And they don't even have a Bible. They use the ESV. In the ESV, it doesn't even say God perfectly preserved His Word. It's, it's, it's just a joke. It's a sad joke, really. But on the authority of Hebrews 9, 15 through 18, is where we get the definition from Israel's doctrine of what the death of Christ does for Israel. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called... Now, who is under the First Testament? Because that's who gets the Second Testament, which would be the New Testament. You have the Old Testament, which is the First, and the New Testament would be the Second. Who gets the New Testament? Because it's the people who were under the First Testament. That's what the verse says. And the people that were under the First Testament, Exodus 19, is the children of Israel. So that would leave you out, that would leave me out, and that would make Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12 true, that we were always strangers to the Law and the Covenant and the Promises. Hmm. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Then I preach with them that Christ died for their sins. Okay, because now you just open the door. You got them thinking. For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. What is amazing is, is I don't try to convince anyone anymore. I just trust the gospel to do the job. You preach the gospel, you tell them what Christ did for them, and, and you, you let them, then they have to sort it out. It's then between them and the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1, 17, 18, and verse 21. For Christ sent me not to baptize. Yes, Paul did baptize, but then shortly after, Christ sent him not to baptize, and we're in the time after that. Can't you tell by all the denominational, non-denominational places that are following that? Not. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. So, see, they got it backwards, most of these denominational, non-denominational places. Okay, They're still baptizing and not preaching the gospel. Well, Paul's got that flipped, okay? Paul says he's not sent to baptize, but to preach the gospel, okay? So maybe if these denominational, non-denominational places flipped it around, you know, if they weren't under the devil's yoke with their bad translations and, and satanic worship as they wave their hands in the air, maybe they, if they flipped it around, they'd get it right because... They got it flipped. They're baptizing instead of they're water baptizing instead of the preaching of the gospel, where Paul says he's not water baptizing, he's preaching the gospel. Not with wisdom of words. So that means no storytelling, no using just positive verses like Rick Warren, no anointed teaching. I, I love that one because if if you're Israel and you're anointed, you don't need to be taught anymore. That's what the anointing does for Israel. But you have these churches that tell you, these assemblies that tell you they have anointed teaching. That would be like large shrimp. Okay? Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made none of effect. So think about that. The wisdom of words. You go to the, some of these places, Bill Hybels or Harvest Translation Chapel or you know Willow Creek or Moody Bible, you know, just turn on the radio. And they'll give you one verse and tell you a two-hour story on the one verse. That would be wisdom of words. Okay. Dr. James Dobson put out five books about family and whatnot. There's not one verse in it. In five books, there's not one Bible verse in it. That would be wisdom of words. Okay. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Okay, again, 
Paul says he came not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. But what they're doing is, is baptizing and not preaching the gospel. They got it backwards here in the verse. You know, that's something that they could fix. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. It is what gets the job done. Okay? For after that is the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Romans 1.16 For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Romans 10.17 So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It is not my power, it is not... Anthony Robbins' power of positive thinking, okay? And by the way, who was the first person to say something positive in your Bible? Do you know? It was the devil himself in the garden in Genesis chapter 3. Didn't he tell Eve that if she ate from the tree, she would be just like God? That's pretty positive, isn't it? It's not my power, it's God's. I have also used the timeline, right, the dispensational chart, and check out that message on my other YouTube station, the dispensational charting. Also, I'll be posting more on my website, and I'm in the process of making a new website that'll have MP3s, okay? So use the timeline and show people how God has progressively revealed himself through it. This is a great way to preach when you write it down on paper and let the person see how time progressed up to the cross and after. Also, another great way is the King James position. It is amazing the conversation that comes out of it when you hit them with the gospel or when you hit them with verses that correct the Hebrew or when you hit them with the verses that correct the Greek because the new translations just copy the Greek and the Hebrew. You ready for this? Error? Yeah. The Hebrew text has errors. Yes, the Greek text has errors. So, I have a friend who has a ministry, and he's a covenant theologian, who has a group in Dublin, okay? He sends notes about his experience, and in his note, he was troubled by everything he saw around him. All the sinful acts going on on the streets, etc. And so I responded to him in his letter saying, why don't you just cut to the chase and preach the gospel? It's the only power of God unto salvation, right? Sin has always been going on. It's a sin-cursed world, right? And isn't the devil the god of it? So why is he surprised by that? What I'm surprised is is that he never preached and taught the gospel to these people that were so far gone and in their sin. So again, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Anyway, he may have had a hard time because of the confusion of the philosophy of man. They are spoiled by men, right? I need to look at every person as souls Christ died for. It is their ignorance of the gospel of the grace of God. That's why they're on their way to hell, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 4 and 5, And such trust have we through Christ to God ward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Colossians 2.8 Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Ah, traditions of men, do we need to name them? Do we name, need to name all the holidays? Philosophy. Philosophy, do we need to go through all the philosophies of men? Like the mourner's bench or praying the sinner's prayer or making Jesus the Lord of your life. And everyone 
that I'm in contact with has heard the gospel. Can you say that? Because you need to. You're an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. You represent Him. You're a minister of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21. Our job as the church, the body of Christ, is to be an ambassador, 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Thanks again for listening. As we go through this series, we're going to talk about the four E's. Evangelism, edification, expansion, and, eval and evaluation. Stay tuned. Thanks again for listening. If you need to contact me about any doctrinal questions, go through my website at buttonowministry.wix.com slash buttonowministry. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.